In this video, we will be setting up a Zone Pro product using the configuration wizard in Zone Pro Designer. This is the second video in the series of Zone Pro product videos. After you've connected to Zone Pro Designer with the hardware, double click on the Zone Pro icon to launch the program screen. This window will show you the configuration that is currently set up for the Zone Pro you are using. There are two sections, the input processing and the output processing. Starting with the input processing, you'll see the input block first. Double click on any icon under this section to view and adjust the gain for a particular input. The microphone inputs will also have a high pass frequency parameter. The next block is EQ. A 4-band parametric EQ is available for the mic inputs, and a 2-band parametric EQ for each source input. The inserts are next in the signal path, giving you the option to add additional processing to your mic signals. The input insert options available to choose from are automatic gain control, notch filter, compressor, gate, de or advanced feedback suppression. These can be selected from the configuration wizard, which we will cover later in this video. The output processing begins with the router block. There's a router associated with each output on the Zone Pro. This section allows you to determine which source you want playing through the associated output. It also allows you to choose a first and second priority source to override the main source if needed. Auto warmth will compensate for loss of low frequencies at lower listening levels. The bandpass filter block will allow you to send certain frequency ranges to that specific output only. Next, you will find a six band parametric EQ for each output of the Zone Pro product. There are inserts available in the output processing with the option to choose from automatic gain control, compressor, or a limiter on each output. The delay block allows you to delay the signal to certain outputs if needed. The delay amount can be displayed in seconds, feet, or meters. The last block is the output block, which gives you the option to invert the polarity on any given output channel. The meters will display input and output when the meters button is turned on. Now that you understand what each block does, you're ready to set up your configuration. Click the Wizard tab and choose Configuration Wizard to start. For this example, we'll be configuring the Zone Pro for use in a restaurant bar application. The bar has four rooms, and we'll need to be able to control volume and switch sources in each room. The sources coming into the Zone Pro will be a paging microphone for announcements, television audio, and a music source. On the source configuration page, you'll want to name all of your source inputs to avoid any confusion. Then choose which DSP inserts you want in the input processing section. For this example, we'll use advanced feedback suppression and a notch filter on the microphone input. Next is the Zone Pro configuration page, where you should name all of your outputs first. We have four rooms in the bar, lobby, bar, dining, and an outdoor patio. If you're using a Zone Pro 1260, 1260M, 1261, or 1261M, then you'll have a mixer as an option, as well as a router for each output. The mixer allows you to mix all sources through one output at once. Choose your crossover configuration and output DSP. For this example, we'll choose mono for the crossover and compressor for the DSP insert. The ZC panel configuration page allows you to select which ZC controllers you have connected to the Zone Pro. ZC inputs 1 through 6 correspond to the top port on the back of the Zone Pro, and ZC inputs 7 through 12 correspond to the bottom port. In this example, we have our four ZC1s daisy chained together and connected to the top port, and our four ZC3s daisy chained together and connected to the bottom port. The edit buttons next to the ZC1s allow you to set a minimum and maximum level. We'll leave it at the default for this example. Remember to set the dip switches on the ZC controllers according to what the diagram shows in Zone Pro Designer. A ZC3 allows you to choose between source control and page steering control. We'll choose source control and then click the edit button to choose which positions will be associated with which source. We'll set position A to none, position B to the TV audio, and position C to the main music source. If you intend to have your microphone set as one of your priorities in the routers, then do not select it as one of your sources here. The source ZC association page allows you to tie the ZC controllers you've just set up to any of the input sources you have available. 
In this example, we don't want to control the input volumes, so we'll choose None and click Next. The Routing and Zones ZC Association page allows you to tie the ZC controllers to any output, as well as select your priority and page sources. In this example, we want all of our zones to have selectable sources, so we'll choose the ZC3 for each source. We also want volume control in each zone, so we'll select the ZC1 for each level control. Since we want our microphone to be used for announcements and to override the selected sources when it's in use, we'll set it as our page or first priority for each zone. The next page will let you decide which parameters you want to have accessible from the Zone Pro's front panel. Since we have ZC controllers set up in each zone, the source and level controls will be disabled. You can then enable or disable the ability to mute and page steer from the front panel using the appropriate checkboxes. Click Finish to exit the configuration wizard and it will load the configuration. You're now live with the Zone Pro and ZC controllers. If you have any questions, please visit www.dbxpro.com.